still very grateful that you will be addressing us via Zoom. Thank you so much and welcome to Kanha. Thank you. Thank you, uh, respected Daji. I was uh, listening with uh, rapt attention and I loved what you said about kindness. Compassion in action is what you called it and I completely agree with you, sir. I really admire the kind of work you do, really admire the kind of work and uh, the kind of uh, teachings that are being imparted uh, at the Kanha Shantiwanam. Um, I would also like to acknowledge Dr. Ananta, the director of UNESCO MGIEP, and all the distinguished gathering and delegates from over 50 countries uh, in the world. Firstly, let me greet you, uh, you know, all of you, because there are a lot of youngsters there, young women, young men. Let me greet all of you on this special day. You know, there are many, many days that we celebrate. The Father's Day, Mother's Day, you know, Children's Day and a bunch of other things. But I don't think any country in the world celebrates, you know, the bond between a brother and a sister. And that is today, in fact, uh, it is Raksha Bandhan, which is celebrated, I think, uh, only in India. And I offer my warm greetings to the young brothers and young sisters out there, you know, on this auspicious day. It gives me immense pleasure to interact with you, to talk to you on this uh, occasion of the International Youth Kindness Conference. It is the first time, in fact, as uh, Daji pointed out, that I've had the opportunity to interact with anybody at uh, Shantiwanam. It's unfortunate that uh, I'm not there in person, but thank you, Daji, for this uh, opportunity. I've heard so many good things about <clears throat> the Heartfulness Program and about uh, Kanha Shantiwan. We are fortunate that your center is located in Telangana amidst, uh, in, amidst all of us. I'm touched by the work Daji and his uh, team have done and Kanha have been doing in developing values pertaining to humanity and organic personality development through years of uh, his work in our state and all over the world as well. As I said, uh, uh, you know, if you listen to him for a few minutes also, you would understand that, uh, you know, eventually one has to be in consonance with nature. One has to be in consonance with the world at large. And one has to be in short, one, one has to be in sync with, you know, world at large. I think the truly universal appeal of Taji's teachings are there for all of us to emulate. They're there for all of us to actually adopt. I must congratulate the Heartfulness Movement for bringing this conference uh, of international youth kindness, focusing on youth with such values is of paramount, uh, you know, for the growth of our society and for the growth of our world at large. If you look at India's population profile, I'm sure this must have been mentioned several times over the last uh, couple of days, but let me just quickly add, if you look at India's demographic, demographic profile, India's average age is 27. We, that makes us one of the youngest countries in the world. 50% of India is less than the age of 27. 65% of India is less than the age of 35. 75% of India is less than the age of 44. Making this a very productive age group to contribute not just to the state, not just to the nation, but also to the world at large. But when, when you look at this productive age group and when you look at what they have to offer, you know, typically it's called the population dividend, the demographic dividend. And India, of course, has an unprecedented opportunity, as Daji was pointing out, of latching onto this, of leveraging this and making us a prosperous nation, not just for ourselves, but also to have the ability to provide solutions for the rest of the world as well. In fact, I'm proud to share with you since we are just about coming out of this pandemic, COVID, I'm proud to share with you that you are sitting right now in Telangana, which is the vaccine capital of the world. In fact, one third of human vaccines produced globally come from Hyderabad, come from Telangana, including the COVID vaccine. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it. Let me quickly point out that one third of human vaccines are produced from Genome Valley, which is located in Hyderabad, in Telangana. Let me also point out, when we talk of demographic dividend, when we talk of population dividend, we also have to keep in mind 
that the population dividend also has the ability to turn very quickly into a liability if not nurtured properly if not taken care of uh, you know with the necessary empowerment through skill sets through uh, you know proper training programs education professional skills man management and organizational behavior as daji was pointing out kindness compassion of course uh, you know it goes without saying that they have to be inculcated into grooming better human beings at large it is in this regard in fact in terms of youth empowerment that the government of telangana which was formed in june 2014 has done some remarkable things you know we believe in the 3i mantra innovation infrastructure and inclusive growth and as many of you there who are indians would obviously know that we are in fact on the 15th of august this month celebrating 75 years of our glorious nation independence for our glorious nation it is truly remarkable that we have as the world's largest democracy have maintained peace have maintained diversity have maintained stability and have continued to grow over the last 75 years but it is also a fact as daji pointed out so eloquently there are some fundamental challenges fundamental issues which still remain unresolved unsolved in our country telangana while it might give me happiness uh, while it might you know give me a bit to gloat about that we are the first state in the country that has provided a portable drinking water connection to all the 10 million homes it also gives me a bit of sadness it also leaves me with a bit of sadness But the remaining states in my country have still not achieved that distinction it's a basic issue telangana also has achieved number of other things which i'll talk about in a bit But what did i mean when i said the 3i mantra innovation infrastructure inclusive growth innovation need not just be you know in technology you know when i say innovation a lot of people assume especially the youngsters that innovation is only confined to the technology world to startups and other things no innovation can come about in the form of thinking of individuals and institutions at large including governments the government of telangana has used innovative methods to disrupt policy making to enable it to be kind to its citizens as daji daji pointed out in fact we have come out with several reforms which i think truly are path breaking and benchmarking for the rest of india to emulate one of the things i am very proud of is our panchayati raj act is our municipal administration act 10% of the budget of each village 10% of the budget of each municipality is earmarked as green budget to ensure that we continue to improve our green cover in our villages in our cities so that we pass on a better planet a better state than what we inherited from our predecessors as a result of this over the last 8 years as a result of our honorable chief ministers brain child a program called harita haram which roughly translates to a green necklace for mother earth we have been able to plant more than 240 crore saplings which translates to 2.4 billion saplings out of which out of which 85% survival has been ensured and out as a result today telangana stands proudly as a state with a remarkable increase in green cover of more than 7.7% from the 24% we started out with in 2014 today our green cover is enhanced to 31.7% which in my opinion is truly a remarkable achievement considering all the pressures that we have in terms of urbanization in terms of suburbanization etc we also have innovated and disrupted in terms of several other policies be it our rural development policy which is ensured that when government of india recently announced top 20 villages in the country 19 were from my state telangana out of the top 20 and when they released the top 10 list all 10 villages from the list were from telangana which is a delight if you ask me not only in terms of rural development but also urban development has been a priority for us in fact when government of india issued its swachh sarvekshan results 
12 municipalities from Telangana also have won awards in various categories. So this is a unique state where you have industry, where, where you have urban development happening, where you have rural development also growing hand in hand. This is a state where you have the green cover, you know, increasing. We also have industry growing rapidly. We have our agriculture exports increasing. We also have our IT exports, you know, growing at almost 240%. This is a state where you see welfare. This is also a state where you see rapid development. That makes Telangana unique and inclusive in its approach of holistic development. We've also ensured that we remain a top destination to attract investment into our state. You know, I would be remiss in my duty if I do not talk about the TSI pass, which has again been a remarkable policy and a remarkable initiative of Honorable Chief Minister, which has given us an opportunity to shine in the ease of doing business rankings across India. TSI pass stands for Telangana State Industrial Project Approval Self-Certification System. What does this mean? Any of you youngsters who would want to explore entrepreneurship, who would want to set up an industry, in Telangana, in fact, you do not need a clearance from the government. We have conferred upon you through TSI pass, the legislation that I just mentioned, which was passed about seven and a half years ago, a right to self-certification, just as how the government of India has conferred right to information as a right of the citizen, right to education as a right of the citizen. We in Telangana have conferred upon our entrepreneurs a right to self-certify themselves as being in compliance with the law of the land, as being a law abiding entity and start construction of your factory or your services, start your service on day one without seeking any clearance from the state government or the village panchayati or the municipal uh, body. Now, how does this work? We only request that you submit an application online on the TS IPAS portal along, you know, with uh, starting and commencing your operations. Now, why do we need that? We need that because we need to know who's doing business in our state and if they are following all the regulatory framework and any concerns with respect to pollution, etc., should also be taken care of. But once you receive your application, we take only 15 days to process and come back to you with an answer. If we do not deliver on the 15 day window on the 16th day, it's a deemed approval. It's an approval by default. No other state in India will tell you this. Now, this is the kind of in this disruptive innovative policy making which has led Telangana to you know climb to the top of the charts on the ease of doing business rankings in India and we are therefore in the last seven and a half years a very attractive destination for investment in the last seven and a half years we have been able to attract more than 2.4 crore rupees in terms of investment we've been able to give approvals to more than 20,000 units through the TSI pass portal We've also been able to create more than 16.4 lakh direct job potential for the youth of Telangana, for the youth of India to come here to set up their entrepreneurship facilities and to also explore growth opportunities. Let me also quickly add an important component, you know, when you need, when you're looking for a job or when you're looking to create jobs is to enhance your skills. Mahatma Gandhiji. As Daji also pointed out, has always valued kindness more than offering prayers. The simplest act of kindness are by far more powerful than a thousand heads bowing in a prayer, is what Mahatma Gandhiji had said. Today, the world needs kindness more than ever because it is with kindness that there can be peace. We in the state are celebrating. Swatantra Bharat Vajrot Sawalu, the 75 years of independence of our glorious nation from the 8th of August till the 22nd. And as part of that, we are also screening the movie uh, Mahatma Gandhi, a movie which was made uh, by Richard Attenborough, which is being shown to more than 2.2 million school going children across the state 
by screening it free of cost in 550 plus theaters. This is to ensure that we inculcate the values of Mahatma Gandhiji, non-violence, inclusiveness, and most importantly, kindness towards fellow human beings. We also need to be kind to ourselves. Self-care, self-love is just as important as caring for others. We must watch out for our own thoughts before they can turn into actions. So keeping, in our, keeping our minds clean from evil and unwanted thoughts is necessary, which is where the work of heartfulness would be so important for humanity. Caring for others, of course, also begins from self-care. Unless one is in good frame of mind and health, he can be of no help to others. I remember the saying, you can accomplish kindness, what you can, what you cannot, you can accomplish through kindness, what you cannot by force. Time and again, we have seen that the world can only be changed by simple acts of kindness. Kindness to nature, as again was pointed out by Daji so eloquently, is also paramount. When we are gentle to mother nature, she gives us back many fold. We must curb our greed and materialistic goals, thereby preventing exploitation of all that mother nature has to offer. I'm told that Kanha Shantivanam is an example of how a barren land got converted into an oasis within five years of by planting millions of trees and conserving a lot of water. My compliments to Daji and the entire team out there who have actually led this by example. I am also informed that heartfulness has grown acres of green cover, planting more than 700,000 trees. This kindness towards nature was only compounded as, as volunteers joined in planting a sapling. The collective effort being recognized by Telangana Harita Mitra Award in 2016 and also in 2018. We at the state level have initiated a massive program, as I pointed out, called as Telangana Kuharita Har. I urge you all to join the movement to ensure that we increase the green cover and we pass on a better earth, a better planet to our children than what we inherited from our predecessors, from our parents. A mandatory provision, as I pointed out, has already been made in both the rural and the urban budgets to ensure that we continue to provide you with much needed financial assistance toward this program. I take this opportunity to thank and greet everybody at Kanha Shantivanam and Daji especially, you know, for supporting us during the COVID times. Your efforts in providing manpower, food, healthcare, and other aid during the various uh, waves of COVID has been tremendously helpful and has been recognized and appreciated by one and all. I urge the youth participating in this wonderful conference to be proactive, not only in care for others, but also caring for yourselves and also taking care of your own self and your family and your friends. I thank Daji and Tanha Shantivanam for giving me this uh, wonderful opportunity. And I once again apologize for not showing up in person. I could not because of my physical, uh, uh, you know, temporary disability. But I do hope and pray that there will come a time when I'll get an opportunity to visit and pay my respects in person. Thank you very much once again and happy Raksha Bandhan to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we are anticipating very, I would say, anxiously awaiting a visit to Kana. And I'm sure together we can move mountains. Thank you, Shri KT Rama Rao, sir, for your encouraging words. We would love to take a couple of questions from our youth delegate.